Oh my God, it hurts. Ah. Oh. No good. Tomorrow, uh, my adventure on Continental Divide Trail starts early in the morning. It's gonna be tough, carrying a lot of stuff, and I'm kind of afraid of uh, the weight. I'm afraid of uh, loneliness. Not so many people hike this trail. Bad weather, which is probably <clears throat> the most dangerous thing here. Exposure, right? Yeah, I'm happy, I'm scared, I'm excited, uh, yeah, mixed emotions, mixed emotions, you know, it's gonna be tough, that's all I know, but on the other hand, I'm so excited to see what this trail has to offer, what it has to bring to me, to my inner soul, you know, to my, um, to my mind yeah yeah give me more give me more give me fucking more piece of shit Thru-hiking is not what we usually see in videos, documentaries, commercials, or what we read about in inspirational articles. Thru-hiking is an exponentiated life, a concentration of life experiences, and as such is full of challenges that often exceed the hikers, which cause anxiety, despair, and once you get inspired by a sweet video and head out on a hiking adventure of several thousand miles, everything you hoped for will be different. And what you didn't expect will hit you and try to break you. This is the story of a breakdown and everything that the usual through hike brings to hikers, which does not include flowers and butterflies, but on the contrary, trouble and fear. This is a real through hike.
I'm anxious because of the heat. Temperatures here in the desert are rocket high and there is no shade. And yeah, it just, you know, I don't feel good. Nope. I don't feel good. I feel bad. So beautiful here, but I don't see it. I don't see it. This, this trail is, is definitely, whether it's heat or whatever, is a trail of extremes. And I, and I find myself like with deeper levels of uncomfortability on this trail than I have even on others. And that, that's the part that, that's hard to cope with is because what people don't realize is yeah, we're, we're doing something we want to do and we're out here and, and a lot of times we're having a good time because they see our pictures. But man, some of these days are slow and hard. You know, when you're when you're walking in 100 degrees for, for 20 miles, like it's, it's hard for people to wrap their head around that. You're stuck in your own head for 20 miles, just at like this level of uncomfortability, this level of misery. And either you find a way to like overcome it or try to embrace it. There are no trees in New Mexico. I met a woman at, uh, at uh, Lordsburg and she said there was 12 juniper trees between the border and Lordsburg and hikers knew every single one of them because you're gonna hide under every single one of those trees at, at some point. so hot and my feet hurts I need a rest and there is no shade whatsoever Whew. yeah I think I need to keep on hiking there is nothing but a desert in front of me well that sucks man I had done desert on the Pacific Crest Trail but this level of desert is um, it's just another level with the amount of exposure and no running water. Um, my legs sunburned, which has never happened to me in my entire life. So um, I'm covering up my legs now and, and um, yeah, everything is just sharper and it's just a brutal, brutal terrain. Yeah. At a certain point, you know, the sunscreen wears off when you're sweating. Another thing that's been happening, my hands are just cracking from the dryness and the heat. So I've got a couple cracks here and I, I cut my thumb. Um, 
it's just your the skin is is starting to toughen up, but it's it kind of feels like like sandpaper or something. The desert is just brutal. You will have the the wind, the sand everywhere. The yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, but I love it. The biggest issue on this stretch is water. It's scarce. Sources are uh, usually bad. And filters can get clogged by this water and water tastes awful. Tastes like shit. I learned some tricks out on the trail from everybody. You just Mio, Mio Energy works, and then you just Gatorade packets, and you just make it the water so sugary you don't even think about you're drinking cow poop. And uh, that's how you just manage it. Because you got to manage it, or if you don't, drink the water, you might die.
thing is, <laughs> I have um, I made a video um, about uh, cattle uh, trough. It looked like an algae soup. I mean, uh, there were, uh, I don't know what it was, there were all these little bugs swimming in it and it was very smelly. That was pretty in the beginning and I was like, well, I will not drink that. But after a few weeks on trail, when you get really thirsty, well, you take that water, you'd filter it, you put your drops in it or not, and you drink it. were fought over water. People killed for a sip of the transparent, fresh liquid. And now we felt the same urge, the same thirst on our own bodies. And it wasn't driving us to kill people, but miles. It was necessary to completely exhaust ourselves to reach that source of life and feel complete gratitude and happiness. And then we transitioned from scarcity to complete abundance. The trail treated us just like life. You long for something that isn't there. And when you get it, new challenges emerge. And your longing becomes anxiety. Once thirsty, now, we were starting to get full. Some of those fords are not friendly to short people. <laughs> I got stuck in a mud hole okay. up to here. I had to basically pull myself out, just as I was approaching the shore, too. Feel me sinking into the... I got so muddy, the next fort I just kind of sat in water and want, rinsed off everything. It was crazy. Hilo River was beautiful because it was through the canyon and the river and like it was nice and like we can saw water. Sometimes we cross the river so many times. Like I remember one day we crossed the river 150 times and I'm like, well, there is no water. We complain it's no water. There is too much water. We complain it's too much water. So I don't know. Sometimes I feel like as a human beings, we are not happy <laughs> whatever we've got, right? We always have to complain. It was a good lesson. It was a good lesson. Then I appreciate my water like more than I was before. In order for water to serve you, it must be in the right amount, at the right temperature, 
and in the right place. If only one of these items is missing, water can become your worst enemy. It turns from a symbol of life to a symbol of death. I've met uh, a lady and she was following me across the river and it, it was really slippery. And we figured out that it's the wrong way, so we went back and she fell into the into the hole and the backpack was onto her head and she was just you know barely breathing i i ditched my backpack and i i ran over i took her backpack and i um, gave her hand and pulled her out yeah yeah <laughs> that was close I did a huge mistake. I mean, everything is frozen. This is my sock. It's solid. Which is not a problem. I have another pair. But I left my water filter outside and it's completely frozen and basically useless from now on. That's a big problem. And shit, shit. I forgot about it, outside. First four days was uh, just the, the worst eye-opening of the trail, of just who you really are and uh, how far you can really push your body. I had done the, uh, some of the Arizona Trail. And that's desert as well, but the New Mexico desert was just way hotter. Absolutely brutal.
my tendons on both of my feet I think they're getting inflated and it's starting to hurt me pretty bad so tendons are my next issue I think There's a spectrum, you know, there's elation on one end and there's extreme discomfort on the other. And you're living in between those two, ex those two extremes. You're vulnerable. Um, and when you start out in extreme conditions like uh, we had here, um, it, it, it's extra tough. It's crazy. You never know what aches and pains are gonna come and uh, what they really mean and what they're, they're gonna entail for the future. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh get it out, yeah. Oh, good thing you brought that knife. <laughs> so needed. God, that was juicy. You can get a paper towel to dry that Dude, off. that's legit. <laughs> All right. The biggest issue, honestly, is just like your foot care, you know, like, Getting a blister, you know, people back home or whatever think, oh, it's no big deal, you know, blisters happen. But when you walk 30 or 50 or however many thousand steps a day, feel it, every single impact, you know, it starts to wear on you. You know, it's like the stuff that kind of like beats you up a little bit. Blisters and stuff, you, do, you just kind of get used to it, but still like feel it every step. Makes those miles kind of long. <laughs> I'm like kicking cactuses as I walk. Uh, I lost a toenail. I mean, it's, it's brutal, it's dry, it's unforgiving. The trail is unforgiving. And you have, to, you have to really be on your A game because you can walk off trail and you could, get, you could injure yourself and die potentially. So it's, it really is no joke. You have to be on your A game. I had major shin splints and I had blisters that were just brutal. They were just uh, tough. From the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you're always working. No matter what, you gotta always be taking care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, even for one day, you could be paying for it for three days later and you'll kick yourself in the butt. You always gotta be working for water and taking care of your feet. Your feet are the number one priority. I didn't expect that it's gonna be that hard for our body. Like my skin, I was just dreaming about bathtub of lotion. <laughs> And I didn't expect, I got really bad blisters. Like I saw meat on my feet and that was really painful. And when it's not the body that's screaming and trying to get you off the trail, it's nature. Sandstorm, barely can't breathe. The sand is coming into my mouth and nose. And it seems like it's a eclipse of the sun. The sun is pale because of the sand in the air. They say it will get worse during the night. So I need a good campsite. This is bad.
And when pain and discomfort multiply, then the personal demons come. So today is a day when I feel I just want to quit. I don't see any purpose in doing this. I don't see any sense. And um, I feel, you know, exhausted. I don't have any energy. I feel bad. And, and nothing works, you know, it just, whatever I take, drink, eat, it's just, it's a tough day. It's a really tough day. And, yeah, I would like to quit now. <laughs> this is just the point in time when you have to endure, you know, endure the pain, suffering, and just keep on going. And, you know, it will pass this low point of my trail. I had several, so this one will pass as well. But sometimes the crisis never passes. It gets deeper and deeper. It becomes a beast that haunts you. And while you sleep, while you dream dreams of victory, it erodes your perseverance. And once invincible, now you slowly become vulnerable and fragile. You're only human. You better get used to it. I had gone across the ice chute at 7 a.m. and the ice was like glassy and hard. And I like, I, I took a couple steps in and it was fine. And then I think like midway through, I realized I was like, uh oh, like this is not good. Like, you know, one slip, one misstep, I'm gonna fall down this ice chute and potentially get injured or, you know, even risk death. On the Continental Divide Trail, I've been more scared um, than I have been in my entire life. Uh, I feel like every day I have to kind of sort of fight for my survival. like a punch in the face. It was like we had just gotten done crossing this vast desert and the next challenge we were like, okay, now we gotta, we have altitude, we have 10,000 foot climbs and we've got snow traverses. The challenges are always coming. They're always new. And when I first got into Colorado, it was like a slap to the face because it was just like, are you ready? Too late, it's time to go. Mountains, the giants. They don't care about you. If you just give them a chance, they're gonna crush you. You better brace yourself. You better gain your stamina and swallow your fear. Because mountains 
just don't care. It's a little bit of dread, almost, you know? It's like, uh, like, like exciting, you know, that you're about to do something, but, but you also don't know what you're walking into. And sometimes it's easy, especially like in mountains and stuff, to kind of find yourself in a position you didn't mean to just because you took a few too many steps. You know, like even coming down from a mountain ridge, a path might look clear, so you make your way down, and then you find that you're, you put yourself in a worse position. You can't, you just gotta walk out of it, or, you know, it's, it's far more dangerous, even though you have to do that. My experience up there in that 12,000 area, uh, it was pretty eye-opening, kind of difficult. Didn't realize what it was gonna take because you would think you might get 18 miles in that day. You might only get 12 miles in all reality and your food carry and everything starts to weigh heavy on you and you're trying to manage all that and you're trying to get your miles every day. The snow just takes it out of you. It just wipes you clean. The majesty, the divinity, the sacramentality of the mountains are still calling you. And it's hard to resist that call. Moreover, whoever resists loses his essence. Man was created to dwell in the heights, at least for a short time, at least to taste that divinity and find a narrow path that will change him forever, which will make him worthy of bearing the name man. The mountain is sacred. If you get lax for one second and you just take the wrong one wrong step, you could slide down 100 feet or you could slide even more to your death. So you have to be on, you have to have a good time, but always be aware. Okay, breaking, breaking. Oh, woohoo! Breaking. Oh, oh. Ah, my tent is still here. Oh. Well, yeah. I got afraid of it so much, and it was like my fear that we're gonna be on a crest and it's gonna be lightning and storm, and it happened. And I was scared, and all the boys were in front of me, and they were faster, and I was running behind them. I felt blood in my throat, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to die right now, but I kind of feel it's not gonna happen. I just have to go like pushing limits, which is not comfortable, but you have to do it if, if it's lightning behind you, right? I, I told you a story earlier that Amanda and I were going up to a ridge and there was one single little gray cloud surrounded by beautiful blue. And we're like, oh, I'll quit. You know, it does it all the time. Storms roll in Colorado, they roll out, it'll be fine. A four hour hailstorm, right off that one little cloud. You know, and you just never know what to expect. You have to be prepared for anything. You have to be adaptable.
we had a hailstorm with thunders, but luckily the majority of uh, storm uh, went, I don't know, maybe 500 meters, kilometer away from us. The only task is to remain warm as much as we can now. Colorado monsoons. We don't like it, no, no. Oh, the mountains, finally. <laughs> that was gnarly. This is good. Windshield. <laughs> a little windshield. For Finally. <laughs> for two guys on a fucking ridge. easy climb. Nope. This is mountaineering. And this was a night snack. I'm not sure is it clever because of the bears cooking but I skipped some meals today because of bad weather so I had to take some more calories today because it's just <clears throat> not enough tomorrow is rain and I will not be able to cook probably so I have to eat now I must not skip the meals that's so important so this is my third meal today so my plan is to wake up early in the morning uh, to eat something and then go to summit the Park view outlook. Tomorrow is a tough day. Tough day.
the day, beautiful morning, sun, amazing sun. I love the sun. And this morning I opened my tent and I saw the blue skies. Oh my God, blue skies. Amazing, amazing thing. And then the sun showed up. I'm so grateful for the sun, for the light and warmth. Special after day, like yesterday. So it's getting windy and a lot of dead trees here no fun no fun at all it's rough time rough weather have to believe everything's gonna be okay and the trees will not fall that's it that's all I can do hopefully it will not collapse during the night. I'm done with Colorado. Yeah, I'm done. So, I don't know, like stuff. Firstly, you cannot uh, believe it, and then you realize that's reality. I don't know how to explain, like, uh, sad. Sad. When I heard the news in Leadville that he died, uh, something died inside of me. It just, the spark just faded. Yeah, we met Cutie at uh, Toaster House. I think before that, but then we hung out with him at Toaster House. Uh, we had a great group there, it was amazing. And we bought beer from him. <laughs> it was a good night. And she was just hiking with them for it was less than a week. She came back with no toenails. Oh. <laughs> Every toenail. I understand everybody losing toes. Let's just get bigger shoes or something. I wonder what my friend's trying to join me. 
I want to see you drink it now, because you've opened it. Do you just chug it? Yeah. yeah. It's a shot. It is a shot. How many ounces? Two ounces, right? Yeah. It's probably two shots. No, no, no. We I think it's two. Oh. No, it's definitely one. That's one, because it's got to say ounces on there, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's one. 100% one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're good? It's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you expect? <laughs> oh, God, that was, that was over the line, man. Or I beat. You did it in the wrong order. <laughs> yeah, beer before whiskey. Yeah. That's What's the rhyme? Talk about it with our, like, hiker trail family and bubble around us a lot and uh, no one really could believe it. And then we just realized that it could happen to everyone. No one, like he was young, strong man. That was a game changer. Because, you know, when you hear somebody died, okay. When I was hiking Colorado Trail, a woman died in a tent because the tree fell on the tent. That was horrible. But, this is the hiker that I've been friend with. I knew him. I took an interview with him. I think it's, it's, it's hard every time someone dies on the trail because, I mean, there's such a part of the community and um, we're, all, we're all out here doing the same thing. We're all out here um, going through these grueling challenges every day. And um, I just, I feel like we lost a, a team member. It's just so, I don't know. So he died and that was really sad. He's 32, he's the same age as me. So um, you just never know when you're gonna die. I had a lot of family deaths before we came out here and then I just had my grandpa die. So it's just like, it's a lot of death. It's really, it's a tragedy. I mean, it's really sad. I mean, I feel like when I heard about it, I literally thought it could be me. I mean, who, you know, it could be anybody. And for a young person just to die suddenly is horribly unexpected. Yeah, passing away of Cutie was um, quite a shock. Nobody expects that. Uh, the death creeped into the CDT community. Black curtain. The hikers, the community found out on the worst possible way that true hike is not a romantic thing. That is a real life and that we are not invincible. But yeah, Cutie was a great guy. I'm privileged that I knew him. And um, I remember all, all these moments I spent with him when I was cooking him uh, a lunch on the Villas Ranch. That was amazing. Uh, cool time at Pie Town. That was cool. And, you know, hiking together with him. 
he was super fast, super capable hiker. And, you know, I remember when I took an interview with him in Chama, I went over to, to my tent and dictionary was there beside it. And she asked me like, hey, how was the interview? And I was like, you know, I said, uh, not so great. I'm, I asked him about hardships of a true hike and these guys killing the trail, you know? It's good, it's fun. Um, I've had only minor blisters this time around, like no other injuries. Uh, all the blisters have been pretty minor and pretty easy to take care of. I just pop them and then stick a piece of tape over them and then they're, I don't notice them anymore. So he was the real outdoorsman. And yeah, I will definitely remember him in the best possible way. It just makes what you want to do in your life. You know, you just have to do it. Even whatever is going to happen, you know, your family knows that, like, we're doing something that we really want to do. And if we do die, that's terrible. But it's like we were living our dream. So you just got to go do it because you just never know. And I think it's, I'm still processing it. I think it will take a while, but yeah, I think we can take a, like from him. We we can take that uh, that he enjoyed the life a lot. He did what he loved, and I loved what his father. Uh, wrote about him that QT, and I agree totally with it, that QT was a man that he, when, it, when it's about the crossing a river, it's not that he want to be the first one who will cross the river, but he will stood in the middle and, and help everyone cross the river, which I think described him a lot. I just really love being outside. Like, I really, really love being outside. I love sleeping outside. I love, like, every time I'm in town, I always stay at the RV parks because I can sleep outside instead of getting a hotel room. You know, I just really, really love being outside. And so this allows me to be outside for five months or five and a half months, however long it takes. And so, yeah. Cutie was found dead in his tent near Lake City, Colorado. He died of natural causes. Life writes strange stories. This one about Cutie will forever be remembered by the class of 2022 Continental Divide trail hikers. Farewell, my friend. Farewell. It's 
big battle inside of me. Big, huge. But that's the true hiking. It's never easy. If it's not the blisters and pains, it's the mental struggles. It's always something. I was saying you, you need to keep on moving, but I'm kind of sick of being on the move. I'm sick of it. The sickness of not having a secure place to lay your head. Through hiking is the ideal place for the worm of this disease to nest in a person. It's legit to have this disease, but if you have it on a through hike, you are doomed to failure. At least according to established patterns. According to what success means in hard-coded textbooks. In some other textbooks, it might just be common sense. I had a big crisis the other day, and I was, um, I snapped. Why am I doing this? Every day I'm running away from fucking storms in the mountains not to get killed. Look at this shit. Look at this water. And then I will come to fucking Wyoming and there will be like no water for 100 miles. I need to carry fucking 20 liters. Why? Why? I'm done. I'm, I'm sick of this. Go up, go down. Go up, go down. Why? I don't know. It's Continental Divide Trail. Yeah. Continental, my ass. And that was uh, just, you know, I snapped because of water on the trail and going up and down and food. But that was not the real reason. And the real reason was I'm fed up with everything, you know. Then snow it just it didn't melt for and for some for some reason it didn't melt here it's melted, but for some reason there it's not melted. There is three meters of snow. Then you post hole. Then you wet. You slide, you lose your energy, you're slow. Why? To get to Canada. Yeah, why? So I met a guy just a few moments ago and he asked me like, uh, how are you doing? And I'm like, okay, and you? And um, <laughs> he said, living my dream. And I figure out as soon as he said that, that I'm not living my dream. I lived my dream on a true hike, but I'm not living the dream on a true hike anymore. The spark has died. I don't know, maybe it's just an excuse but the fact is that the spark is gone. And I'm going for days, for days, just looking. Maybe it will, you know, come back, come back. If I go to Wyoming, it's going to go back. And if I do this, it's going to go back. If I do that, it's going to... No, it's, it's not coming back. The spark is gone. How do I live this type of living, which is tremendously hard and tough without that spark. And I saw that spark in that guy's eyes, like, yeah, living the dream. And I'm like, oh, really? Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm done with this. I'm sick of it. Sick of being tired. Sick of being hungry. 
I'm sick of being wet, cold. I'm sick of being afraid that thunder will kill me or that I'll freeze to death somewhere in these crazy Colorado mountains. And then my hiking body died. I don't like this. I don't like it. Like the guy said, living the dream, right? And I think my dream is somewhere else now, not here. This through hike became just a big struggle for me. Look at this. Just listen to the sound. Yeah, amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, give me more, give me more. Give me fucking more. Piece of shit. Just thinking of quitting the trail is like somebody is ripping off my arm. It's just unbearable. I did three through hikes, three successful through hikes. This is the fourth one and just the idea that I will quit is just, my ego is destroyed, you know, with this idea. I came here to finish the trail. I didn't come to quit the trail. It's so difficult, it's so difficult to, you know, release, to release my, um, my idea, my goal. So, so difficult. I don't know. I don't know. One of the most difficult things in my life so far is this decision. I don't know. You happy? You happy now? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm completely wet. You happy? The trail is happy because I'm miserable and the trail flourishes. The trail is fucking happy. Well, fuck you. I'm fucking going home. Fuck you! I said that I want to go home. And yeah, that's the truth. I do want to go home. And when the decision is made, nothing can keep you on the trail. You question your decisions, wondering if you made a hasty one or if you're just very tired. But whatever the answer, your body and your psyche have begun the process of letting go. The tension eases, the goal fades, the desire for your family begins to bewitch you. Priorities are being rearranged. You have reached your end. You are just a human after all, and you are getting used to it.
you, Corrado. What do we have here? Trail magic? Really? Nothing here, nothing here, and nothing here, and there's a book. Whatever. Let me sign this. What's the date today? 6th of July. Tesla. Tesla, here. Okay. Thank you for trail magic. This is my trail magic. This empty road and rain. Toilet. That looks like a good place to hide from a rain and to put something warmer on me. And so it ends. What should have been a triumph of the flesh turned into a triumph of another kind. Humility triumphed. Reality, after all. When a man finds himself in front of a wall, some new values are revealed to him, and qualities he didn't even know existed were revealed in all their splendor. Every end brings a new beginning. Some people were waiting for you. And now, enriched by the experience of a kind of defeat, you return humbled, but exalted. Weaker, but stronger. Sad, but elated. Incomplete, but fulfilled. You are a walking contradiction. A man who had the strength to say, enough. You're good. Keep it up. Another song, another poem, another question Can my body find the spirit that has left it? And all I want is for my life to be a blessing I don't know, all I know, I'm just guessing I'm tired of this road Broken skin and bones I have spent a lifetime Looking for a lifeline Running through the sunshine Falling in the dark No, I'm not the only Crazy fool that's lonely When the world won't hold me Hold me in her arms Another song, another poem, another question I wonder if I'll ever learn this lesson And all I want 
It's for my life to be a blessing I don't know, all I know, I'm just guessing I'm tired of this road Broken shoes and clothes I have spent a lifetime looking for a lifeline Running through the sunshine, falling in the dark no, I'm not the only crazy fool that's lonely When the world won't hold me, hold me in her arms to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 